fuel relay, fuel pump relay on. I'm just gonna let it run for a little bit, see what happens. Do a little Keith tap test here. No, uh, no control for the fuel pump. Okay. How can this not throw a code? I don't know. Codes menu. No codes present. You see it. You believe it. Uh, let's look. Take a look at that wiring diagram. Look for uh, for grounds. So I'm just about ready to call a computer on this. We verified that the single ground wire for the PCM on G106 that also grounds this uh, like fan relay 45. You pop that relay out. So the ground itself, we can verify it from here. Test light, and battery positive, it lights up. No problem there. But I've never seen a computer do that to a vent solenoid. So the driver tries to work, but what the heck? <laughs> um, not not doing too well there. Well, for lack of a better thing to try, we're gonna disconnect the three connectors on the PCM. Uh, I guess it's not an eight. <laughs> Get the right socket. All right, all the pins are disconnected. Let's put them back. All right, let's try again. Nothing. Back to our engine menu. Codes. Alright, loss of communications. Let's clear these out. No codes. Back to our functional test, output controls, EVAP, uh, um, vent solenoid, see if it does the same damn thing. Vent solenoid on. Same thing. You can hear it click. Once in a while, it doesn't even even correspond to our uh, spikes. Like no click, no click. There you go. Is it clicked that time? I mean, that's that's about it. We can verify to be 100% powers and grounds at the PCM, but they're going to be fine. Uh, let's do it, why not, for the naysayers. Alright, so our ground is on pins, or our connector C2, pin 66, black wire. I think this is connector C2, it's in the middle. And the pins go, there's um, 40, 46, 56, 64, 65, 66, there is a black wire right there. Take our test light, so it's going to be the third pin over. Our test light works. Check the pin. No light. What the heck? Uh, let me double check that the pins are right. Damn, I was checking the wrong pin. It's actually 65, and 65 is that lonely pin in the middle. That would be... This guy right here, that's our main computer ground. Here we go, test light. Our ground is good. That's it. We could check computer powers, I guess. 
I don't think it's going to lead anywhere. We're going to call a computer very soon. So ignition voltage in 21, 17, 19, 20. I mean, I don't. Let's let's check it. Let's check it. Fine. Let's check it. C1 and C3. All right. I won't show every one, but we're going down the line. That's the battery positive voltage, pin 20 on C1, orange wire, boom, we got power. So we're going to check, well I guess pin 19 is right next to it, so pink wire, uh oh, key is on, that, it, that should be pin, that should be pin 19, we're missing that one, preliminary, there's also a pink on C121. Alright, so we have power on pin 21. We have power on pin 20. Do we have pin power on pin 19? Let's see. 19 nothing, so 19 nothing, 20, 21. So let's chase pin 19. I, I like this. <laughs> this is a, uh, oh man, we're so close to calling a PCM. That just proves you cannot, cannot prematurely call computers. No way, no how. There it is, pink wire. So pin 19 is bad, 20 and 21 are good. Let's see where pin 19 comes from. It comes from PCM1 fuse 28 in the fuse blocks under hood. So let's check fuse 28 PCM1. Fuse 28 right there. PCM1 fuse 28. Oh, get the Varus out of here. Right there. I know we're getting close. <laughs> 20. Oh, uh, I forgot already. Fuse 28. That is that guy. That is this guy. There's a 15 amp. 28 P PCM1 15 amp. Make sure our test light works. Always make sure your equipment works. 15 on and. Oh shit, blown fuse. No way. Get out of here. We even have a fuse puller. This is ridiculous. Took me that long to find a blown fuse. It's definitely blown. Why? Turn this guy off. Bingo. Alright. So we need a new 15 amp fuse. We can install a, uh, a little fuse buddy. Measure the current through there when we run the vehicle. See what, what happens. All right guys, this is fantastic. PCM1 fuse 28, 15 amp feeds all the ignition coils and all the fuel injectors and the PCM. So, we gotta get a current clamp on here, get the scope out and see if there's any overcurrent on this fuse. See if it uh, might be a bad ignition coil or something blowing this fuse and shutting the whole truck down. Alrighty, got the fuse connected. PCM is still disconnected. Let's go back to pin, what was it, 19. So that guy there. Turn the key on, see what happens. Worst case, we'll blow a 25 amp fuse. Lights are on, fuse is not blown. Let's reconnect the computer and see if it fires up. All right, we got our scope ready. Amp clamp, you're gonna have one volt is 10 amps, so that's like 12 amps right there. Let's fire it up. It should run. Key on. Sweet. Hey, it's misfiring. Oh, 
about to flip our implant around. So we got 10 amps going through there, is that, is that accurate? Misfiring pretty bad. Let's uh, drop the time base a little bit. There we go. We're definitely missing uh, an ignition coil. But it runs. And it's not blowing my fuse. And it looks like maximum amperage is 0.5, so that's 5 amps. Let's turn it off. Make sure our amp clamp is being accurate here, so let's re-zero that guy. Okay. First, I want to do key on. No amperage. than 10 amps. There you go. So my question is, was that 10 amp baseline accurate before? Do a little wiggle test by the computer. I mean, that fuse is definitely blown. We can figure out which ignition coil that is. They're kind of buried under the intake there. Under that air box. But that's that's what we have right now. Let's see, where's our trigger? Where is our trigger? There you go. Zoom in on that a little bit. There should be ignition and injector pulses on here. And what it's trying to do here. Clicking, like engaging something. Exhaust manifold is in massive leak somewhere. It smells like unburned fuel. But it's running. So, what did we learn? Bad ignition switch built in. Missing power at the PCM. Blown fuse, we still don't know why it blew. And it's got a misfire. That's a lot of problems. That's more than one hour of diagnostic charge. So the engine's nice enough to tell us that we have a P0300. Not too helpful. But if we look at our data, misfire data, let's see which cylinder it is. And there it is, number two. Number two's counting up. Constant misfire. Okay. I guess we can pop the air intake off, swap coils around, but uh, we still have to find why the fuse blew.
Oh, and the yeah, I haven't done a there. vacuum because yep. it overheated. I'm suspect of. Hey, yeah, that. yeah, it might it might be. But if I'm wrong, then it's electronic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Do the do and the compression it check. Over and I took spark plugs out and tested yep. the coil, and you know I got uh -huh. the I went online and All checked right. the coil and everything. Let's see here. So we swapped coils number two and three. Three is a brand new one that was just replaced. The owner tells me. So let's see if the misfire moves with the number two coil. Fire it up. Turn on our current clamp. We're still missing one. Now let's see if the misfire, according to the scanner, moved. Yep, and moved to number three. Perfect. So all you need is another coil. How about that? <laughs> That's great. That's that That's is good great. news. It's not your computer and it's not That's something great. else. Uh, and uh, at this point, since our current ramps look good, I'm going to say that coil actually blew the fuse. It, it shorted out and blew the fuse. Now it's completely dead. And uh, that's it. So get a new coil for this thing and uh, let me know how it runs. I will. And with that, uh, we'll do a follow-up if there's any other issues. But thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.